Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back from the break. This is Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. This is the second segment of Shabbat service. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. It is Saturday, August 20th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And in the year 5782, it is the 23rd of, of, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Um, just to recap on a couple announcements, we are continuing with the Bible study. Um, we are using the English Standard Version of the Bible currently, and we are going to begin First Chronicles, reading chapters 1 through 14 in the upcoming week. And on Tuesday evening, we meet live and, and in real time. At 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can come meet with us. Uh, this is live fellowship. Uh, we do prayer requests and we do educational things as well. Um, so it is a good time in the Lord and you're most welcome to come join us. You can join by phone or you can join by website. Um, I do post to four social media platforms. Um, I post to MeWe, to USA.com. USALife.com and to Facebook and to Gab. And in that posting, there's there's two links. The first link is the phone list. There's about 80 nations that have free access, and this is the free list. Um, as I mentioned in the in, in the first segment, it says toll for every single one, and this is the free list that they gave us. Um, what you need to do is dial your in-country number and then wait for the prompts and then put in the access code um, and don't forget to um, add the number sign and that should get you in and also if you're, you you scroll to the second link that will be for the web the web address and to join by web you can join by by the web um, app or by the phone app and it is safe to download and then to run the exact Follow the prompts into the conference area. You will find that there's a built-in microphone, a camera, and a chat area, as well as a whiteboard. So um, those are two ways that you can join us. And you can certainly try your access before Tuesday evening. Um, that's fine. You will know that you got in if you're doing it by phone, uh, because it'll say the host has not yet joined and proceed to play music then you'll know that you have been able to access it just fine. Uh, if you're having any issues, you can certainly message me on on um, on chat, and I will be glad to assist you, even open up the conference room to walk you through it. I've done that in the past. That's not a problem. So with that being said, I'm going to open up with our with our opening prayer for this, this half, and then we'll, we'll commence with... Um, the second half of Shabbat. Avina Malkino, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for this day that you have sanctified us holy. This is the Sabbath, this is Shabbat, and this is the day that you declared as holy. And you gave us that example in that you worked six days and you rested on the seventh day. This is the seventh day of our week. It is Shabbat. And we thank you, Father God, for that that you're a good father and you give us examples. Father God, we ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, come guide us, direct us in the rest of Shabbat service. Show us what it is that you want us to grasp from, from the rest of Shabbat and that we can incorporate it in our daily lives. We love you, Father God. We give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory because it all belongs to you. We pray this in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather B'nai Israel to worship, and we're going to sound the shofar now. <laughs> I 
am going to pause it now for you to listen to some praise and worship songs. As I mentioned on the first part, I do not, um, I do not incorporate anything on these recordings because we, we just haven't from the beginning to avoid any issues uh, on all the different places that we post to. What I do uh, is I do post songs. Uh, on the social media platform, I post a series of songs and then I'll post part one and part two of Shabbat and then another series of songs. The second series of songs, of course, can be to part two, th this to this recording that you, you can actually click on right from social media and it will take you to the artist's YouTube channels. So there's a plus to that because you, you get to actually, uh, if you haven't listened to to any of the music you can actually familiarize yourself with these wonderful artists that have wonderfully anointed praise and worship songs and please do support what they do they bring us wonderful worship songs so you get a chance to um familiarize yourself with them and of course if you have your own favorite praise and worship songs that you prefer to listen to um, i'm going to pause it now uh, for you to go do so just a a little sidebar here we also do praise and worship. We don't omit it. Um, it's just we have never incorporated it into um, the recordings to avoid any any issues like I mentioned. Um, but praise and worship is very important. Um, we are designed, we were created to praise and worship our creator. So by all means, uh, Praise and worship is one of the most important elements of Shabbat service, of a church service. So we're going to take this time now to do some praise and worship, and then we're going to come back with the Brit Kadashah scriptures. Okay, well, we've got a couple, well, actually a few um, scriptures to read from the Brit Kadashah this week. We are going to begin with Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. That's a little short. Uh, when Yeshua came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They answered, Some say John, the Immerser. Others say Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He said, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yeshua said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also tell you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my community, and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven, and what you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Now, in some Bibles, <clears throat> excuse me, in some Bibles that, that statement will say whatever, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in, in heaven. So this is like, this is like this, this is spiritual warfare. Uh, one of the, one of the things we do in spiritual warfare is binding and loosing. So that is what uh, is being referred to here as well. That it, and, and Yeshua is letting him know he's giving the authority back to the church um, and that he's building um, his church and he will be giving that power and authority. The dominion um, that was lost through Adam and Eve was going to be reinstated to the people. The next, um, the next set of scripture readings we have Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 39. So it's the, the entire chapter of 8. Life in the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who, in, who are in Messiah Yeshua. For the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has set you free from the law of sin and death. By being saved and born again, you, you're born again uh, into the spirit and and, and it's through messiah yeshua that our sin debt is paid in full and forgiven and we now have life uh, the promise of eternal life for what was impossible for the torah 
because you can't, there's no amount of works that you can do to save yourself. Uh, since it was weakened on account of the flesh, God has done, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as a sin offering, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the Torah might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach, and Ruach is the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Ruach set their minds on the things of the Ruach. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the Ruach is life and shalom. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not submit itself to the law of God, for it cannot. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach, if indeed the Ruach Elohim dwells in you. So, you know, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh dwells in you, uh, you're not in the flesh, but you're in the Spirit. You're operating in the Spirit. Now, if anyone does not have the Ruach of Messiah, he does not belong to him. We must be born. And Yeshua tells this to Nicodemus, a Pharisee, that one must be born again of spirit and water, period. Now, can you operate in the flesh? Yeah, because we're living in a fleshly body and we need to, we need to be aware of that all the time. But if Messiah is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Ruach, the one who raised Yeshua from the dead, dwells in you, the one who raised Messiah Yeshua from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Ruach who dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we do not owe anything to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you must die. But if you if by the Ruach you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. For all who are led by the Ruach Elohim, these are sons of God. For if for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall again into fear, rather you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we, whom we cry, Abba, Father, the Ruach himself, bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Messiah, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The coming glory, for I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the coming glory to be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly awaits the revelation of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willing, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from bondage to decay into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans together and suffered, suffers birth pains until now. And not only creation, but even ourselves, we ourselves who have the first fruit of the Ruach groan in, inwardly as we eagerly await for adoption, the redemption of our body. For in hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, then we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. In the same way, the Ruach helps in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Ruach himself intercedes for us with groans too deep for words. And that is can be known as prevailing prayer when, when the Holy Spirit actually comes over and, and intercedes with us in prayer. And he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Ruach because he intercedes for the Kedeshim according to the will of God. Now we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So here is that love of God that parallels from the, the Torah portion. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say? 
in view of these things. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? It is Messiah who died and moreover was raised and it is and is now at the right hand of God who also intercedes for us. Messiah is forever our intercessor. Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your, your sake we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Messiah Yeshua our Lord. And the final scripture readings we have Hebrews chapter 11. Um, we're going to do the entire chapter, uh, verses 1 to 40. The faithful see from afar. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of realities not seen. For by it the elders received con common commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen did not come from anything visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain. Through faith, he was commended as righteous when God approved of his gifts. And through faith, he still speaks, although he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken so as to not see death, and he was not found because God took him. He was he was, as we called, harpazo, raptured. For before he was taken, he was commended as pleasing to God. Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about events not yet seen, in holy fear prepared an ark for the safety of his household. Through faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he migrated to the land of promise as if, as, as if it were, a, were foreign, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise, for he was waiting for the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive when she was barren and past the age, since she was considered the one who had made the promise to be faithful. So, from one and him, as good as dead, were fathered offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as uncountable as the sand on the seashore. These all died in faith without receiving the things promised, but they saw them and welcomed them from afar, and they confessed that they were strangers and sojourners on the earth. They didn't see the multiplication, you know, that they were, you know, that, that their offspring would be as numerous as the stars of heaven and, and as uncountable as the sand on the seashore, but they believed that to be so, because God told them, and that was a promise and a covenant. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland and we're talking about the sojourners um abraham called himself a, a sojourner on the earth if indeed they had been thinking about where they had come from they would have had an opportunity to return but as, as it is they yearn for a better land that is a heavenly one therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them by faith abraham when he was tested offered up isaac yes he who had received the promises, was offering up his one and only son. And that, again, was a type and shadow, because God the Father gave his one and only son, and we're going to get into that with the, with the altar call. The one about whom it was said, through Isaac's offspring shall be named, be named for you. He reasoned that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, and in a sense, he did receive them back from there. Yet, his faith, he, he was 
in anguish when he was doing this, but he, he had faith in God that if he followed through with, with killing his son, was offering his son up as a sacrifice, that God would raise him up anyway. God didn't make him go through that. When he saw that, that Abraham was faithful and he was going to obey God, he provided um, the ram that was caught in the thicket as the offering. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of jo Joseph, and he bowed in worship while leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, made mention of the exodus of Benai Israel and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was an extraordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's decree. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose to suffer mistreatment along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the, the passing pleasures of sin. He considered the disgrace of Messiah as greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to the reward. Now, again, that's a type and shadow of Yeshua as well. Both Joseph and both Moses. By faith he left Egypt, not fear, fearing the, the king's anger, for he per persevered as if seeing the one who was invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the smearing of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as if on dry ground. When the Egyptian tried it, they were when the Egyptians had tried it, they were swallowed up. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were circled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she welcomed the spies with shalom. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me if I if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, also of David, and Samuel, Samuel and the prophets. By faith they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, remained strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, and made foreign armies flee. Women received their dead raised back to life, and others were tortured after not accepting release so that so they might obtain a better resurrection. Others experienced the trial of mocking and scourging, yes, and even chains in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two. Now he's speaking, at, well, Isaiah was one that was sawed in two, one of the prophets. They were murdered with a sword, like, and they went around in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered around in deserts and mountains, caves and holes in the ground. And all these, though commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that only with us would they reach perfection. And that is the end of the Brit Kadashah readings for this week. Again, um, in the Torah portion, Moses was continuing to uh, prepare the people for going across the Jordan, um, letting them know that if they kept the mitzvah, that, that definitely uh, Adam and I would bless them and they would do very well. He went over um, the, some of the events that, that occurred during the 40 years of wandering in the desert. And they were warned also against pride uh, to to not say in their heart that everything, all the all the goodness, all the blessings that that Adonai was about to give them, um, that it was of their own works. But no, it was from Adonai. Adonai would take care of them, and and Adonai should get all the glory. So that is the the long and short of of that. We went into greater detail, of course, in the first half. Um, and also, um, I do want to mention also. Uh, the loving God with all your heart, with all their hearts, all your heart, and not turning to idols. That was stressed quite a bit. The half Torah portion, um, again, is the second half Torah of consolation. 
uh, which begins with a lament from Zion, the city of Jerusalem, that the Lord and, and the people were, were lamenting, mourning that they felt that God had forgotten them. And then they were told that, no, he had not, but reminded them of the sin that had occurred, um, but that he was, that he still was their God and um, gave them encouragement. Despite the calamity of exile and destruction of the temple, Jerusalem would be rebuilt and overflowing with the Jewish people. Um, so um, that was the half Torah. And of course, um, in Matthew, um, the, the short read in um, chapter, chapter 16, uh, verses 13 to 20, this is when um, Yeshua is asking the disciples, who, who do the people say that I am? And Simon Peter is the one that said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Yeshua said to him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So he knew that he got it from the spirit of, of Elohim, from the spirit of God. And he said, and I also tell you that you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my community and the gates of Sheol. Sheol will not overpower it. The gates of hell will not prevail, in other words, and also gave some key elements to uh, spiritual warfare. Uh, he said he would give the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So he was already letting the disciples know that he was giving, he was establishing his church, and he was going to, he was going to give the authority and dominion back to his church once the evil one was defeated, which we know he was defeated on Calvary when Yeshua died. And you know, the the evil one is responsible for the death of, of an innocent person because Yeshua was innocent. He was not guilty of anything. So the reading from, from um, Romans is a triumphant um, piece of confidence in the Lord to fulfill his word and keep his promises. Nothing in all of hell, earth, or heaven can separate us from the love and purposes of Adonai, who works all things together for good to those who are called out to be his own treasured people. May his great name be praised forever and ever. And and the passages in the book of Hebrew links to the half Torah, just as Abraham is described. We went through all the people that uh, had deep faith. They did not see, but they had faith in, in God that, that this would happen. Uh, just as Abraham described as looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God, and Sarah is described as conceiving Isaac through faith. So we too, as followers of Mashiach, Yeshua, are strangers and sojourners upon the earth. We are in the world, but not of it. That statement is so true. And we are eagerly anticipating the revelation of the Lord at the end of days. We're waiting for his return eagerly to go with him. We to await the future glory of Jerusalem when the Lord Yeshua will reign as king of Israel during the millennial kingdom. And all the promises given to national Israel are fulfilled. And that is the end of our readings from the ha from the Torah, the half Torah, and the Brit Kadashah for this week. And we're going to close in prayer and open up with our um, altar call. And then we will close out Shabbat service for this week. Father God, we thank you for this powerful word. We thank you that you are a loving God and you long to bless your children, your family. You love us that much. And by faith and trust in you and focusing on you, you do bless us. We love you, Father God, for that. Help us to, to maintain our faith vision that you give to each and every one of us individually. You put callings on our lives. You give us a faith vision that we are to, we are to see and Help us to keep those negative thoughts from entering 
that, that are placed from the evil one to try to distract us, to steal from us the faith vision that you have given to us. Help us to stay focused on what you have called us to do, to continue with the great commission that you have called us to do. And we thank you for all that you have done in sending us your son to redeem us first and foremost. We thank you for all that you are currently doing and all that you will do. And we have faith in the promise of the coming of our king that has been promised to us. And we do anxiously await his return when he will set everything straight. We long for that day. We love you, Father God. We worship and adore you. We give you our praise, all of our praise. May it ever be on our lips to praise you, to give you honor, and to give you glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua, through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for each and every one of us. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. The wages of sin is death and separation from our creator. We don't want that. We were created in the image of God and our spirit longs for our creator. Now, there's a lot of people running around in the world that, you know, we are spiritual beings, but there's many people in this world, they're, they're, they're going in the wrong direction and entertaining familiar spirits, which they should not be. Um, these are people engaged in, in other practices that we are not to get involved with. But we are spiritual beings and, we, and long for that spiritual connection. But, but the spiritual connection that we long for is with our creator, and that is God Almighty. So we need to bear that in mind. Yeshua, our Lord, took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to our creator and be with him. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. So even though he's our creator, if we're full of sin and we're not redeemed, we cannot be, be in front of, of the Lord. You know, when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, his heart had to be right. Uh, he had to make sure that he had asked for forgiveness of sin. He, his heart had to be right. Otherwise, he could have been struck down dead because sin cannot stand before a holy God. So this is one of the reasons why on the hem of of the robe of the high priest, they had these little bells that were sewn in. So the other priests who were mulling around, you know, in the holy place beyond the veil, um, they would hear the high priest moving about. And if they didn't hear him, they got a little concerned, you know, was he right with God? Did God strike him down? Um, so it was very, very important. And no, and, and, and so is the same for us. Sin will not stand before a holy Holy God and and our fleshly sinful body will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. We must be born again, born of spirit and water. Jesus, Yeshua told Nicodemus this, and you can read this yourself in the Gospel of John, chapter three. He says, "Flesh is flesh, and spirit is spirit." You can, you know, you need to be born again, and no, not born in the flesh again, because you're already born in the flesh. You cannot repeat that. But um, through him, you can be born again through his spirit. And he covers us. We become one with him and abide in him. And Father God loves Yeshua so much, loves the son so much because he's perfect in every way. Now, getting back to... Um, the sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament were a covering for sin because the wages of sin are death and separation. As, as we mentioned, God did allow for a substitute, but he also then allowed for the ultimate substitute to take away the sins of the world so we could finally, once and for all, be reconciled. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. 
God did not send his son, Yeshua, into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. But you also have free will to make that decision. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. God sent his only son. Abraham didn't lose his son to a sacrifice. God spared him. But that was a type and shadow. He was obedient to that point. Yeshua was obedient to death because he came to redeem us. He emptied himself of all his God-like qualities because he had to come as a man to defeat the evil one, to reverse the curse that was uh, done so long ago in the Garden of Eden through the first Adam and Eve when they brought sin into the world. And they lost their glorified body because they had the glory covering of God. And once they sinned, they, they, they could not be present in front of God in, in that manner. And they realized that oof, we're in this, their body changed into this flesh-like body. And they realized they didn't have clothes and um, they were ashamed. They hid uh, and the whole nine yards. And this is where it all began. But Jesus, when he died on the on the cross, he reversed that curse. And he gave dominion and authority back to the church. We need to exercise that in Jesus' name. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost, they had had dominion over the earth and authority. And that included over the evil one and the third of the angels that were thrust to the earth. And that angered Satan so much. He had once been a highly respected cherub who had a very uh, important job in heaven. He guarded the throne of God himself and also was a praise and worship leader. He, he was the, one of the most beautiful angels, and he was in charge of other angels as well. Well, he did convince a third of the angels uh, to rebel against God. He had become so prideful, uh, very conceited in himself, and he thought he was he, he could take over the kingdom of God. Well, he is a created being himself. God created him. He cannot create anything. When he was in heaven, um, his name was Lucifer. That name, that title, everything was stripped from him. He is given the name of serpent, dragon, um, evil one, Satan, the Hasatan. Um, nothing nice. So he actually disguised himself as a serpent. Otherwise, I think Adam and Eve would have known who he was and, and, and dealt with him, rebuked him and kicked him out. Um, but he was very cunning and very sly. And he knows the word of God and he knows how to twist the word of God. And he did just that. And it enticed Eve enough to look at the tree. To, it tempted her enough to look and say, oh, well, it, everything looks good on this tree. What, what, what could be wrong? And, and actually, he promised them something that they already had. They were made in the image of God. And he, he said, oh, it, you will be like gods. Well, he, they were already like, like, like God being created in his image. So they, <laughs> he tricked them with, with the play on words. And I will caution people today to be careful who you listen to because there's, there's just a subtle twist of the word. The words uh, can change a whole meaning. Um, even just the way the, you say something when you, para, you know, paraphrase things and paraverbal communication, uh, not the way you say something. It, it's not, not what you say, but how you say it too can change a meaning. But just to twist, a, take a little bit of truth and twist it. The devil was good at doing that. He tried doing that with Yeshua, uh, you know, and, you know, Yeshua rebuked him with, with the word of God. It is written. And he would, he would, he rebuked him. So be careful who you listen to in the world because they will. There's all kinds of false doctrine, 
And Yeshua and the disciples all warned the people that there would be this that would happen, uh, false words, false doctrine, false prophets, even false Jesuses. There's many that we've had, we've had many false messiahs that have come since since Yeshua has left and called themselves Jesus, um, and um, they have been his, through history. Um, so we need to be definitely aware of that. And if they were warning us over 2,000 years ago, imagine how exponentially um, it has grown now. There's a lot of false doctrine. One of the one of the biggest misnomers is there's many paths that lead to heaven. Well, that is a lie. There's one, and it's Yeshua. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. That's it. That's not many paths. That's one. And, and it would it would have been a waste for Yeshua to come and die for everyone if there was many paths that you could earn your way to heaven. You can't. There's nothing that you can physically do. You were born in the line of Adam, which is born in the sinful fleshly body. And there's nothing you can do to redeem yourself. The job has already been done by Yeshua. Our job is to ask Yeshua, who died for us, to, who took our sins and paid it in full, is to ask for forgiveness and repent, repent from those sins and not return to those sins, but to live a better life and to ask Yeshua to be our Lord and Savior. He is the Lord and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess when he returns that he is Lord, he is the King of Kings. So you will do it. If you reject him now, you will not reject him then. But unfortunately, it will be too late. Choose this day whom you will serve. While you have breath in your lungs, make a good decision. Jesus loved you. Yeshua loved you. He loved me. He lo if you had been the only person... On this earth, he would have come and died for you because that's how much he loves humanity. That's how much. And we can't even imagine how deep that love goes. It had to be absolutely horrific for him to have all the sins of the world, past, present, in his day, and in future, everyone that lived after he had been here to take everybody's sins, and it was put on him. Because sin cannot stand before a holy God, and he, it, he being so connected to Father God, it was that was another anguish that he went through, that separation. Even though it was short, it was long enough to cause him pain, emotional pain, physical pain, the whole nine yards. And the physical pain of the way he died. And before he died, the anguish that he went through. He, t he took a beating from the Roman soldiers. One of those stripes was for our, our illnesses and afflictions. So we can say, by his stripes, we are healed. You cannot save yourself. There are not many paths to heaven. There's one. Don't listen to the world. The world will lead you to hell in a handbasket very quickly. And, and that is the truth. Not everyone, and, and that's another thing the world will tell you, everyone's going to heaven. Not everyone's going to heaven. I mean, there may be people that grew up in a church, but if they never were born again and saved, uh, they're not going to heaven. It's very simple. Yeshua said it. It is so. And he said, there will be those who stand before me and say, Lord, Lord, did I not pray in your name? Did I not, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out, out demons in your name? And he will look at them and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know who you are. Because they probably never accepted him as Lord and Savior. You, They never ever were saved and born again. The sad part is many churches have taken out altar calls 
You don't know who's sitting in a church pew that really is not saved. It should be offered at every service, every service. We can't assume that just because somebody goes to church that they're born again and saved. Maybe not so. One of the thing, This is one of the things that the Lord put on my heart to put in every, every teaching, service, what, what, whatever I'm doing um, to do this, to do an altar call. And ever since it was put on my heart to do so, I have. I never know who may come across this video and it may not be saved. And just it might be the right timing, the right day, the right moment in time that they are ready and willing to come to the Lord. He loves you. He wouldn't have come to this earth and died a horrific death if he, had, he did not. All the money in the world cannot buy your way to heaven. Because once you leave this earth, earth suit that we occupy in this, this earthly realm, this is so temporary too, mind you, um, in comparison to what eternity is. Eternity is forever. And that will go on and on and on and on and on. Um, once you leave this, this, this body, this life, this temporary existence that we're in, your money means nothing. And if you go to heaven or you go to hell, it means nothing in either place. You can't spend it where you're going. It doesn't mean anything. It's only here for the earthly purpose of living in this world that we live in. So be careful. Choose this day whom you will serve. Be wise. Be wise is all I'm going to say. Eternity is forever. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that can do this because he died for each and every one of us. All you got to do is call on his name, ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. He will forget your sins. He will throw them as far as the east is to the west. He will remember your sin no more. It's as if it never happened. So if you are ready to say this prayer with me today, if you would like to, to be saved and to come to the Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and make him your Lord and Savior, you can say this prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner. I totally understand now that I need a Savior, and that Savior is Yeshua, Jesus, because he died for me on a cross. I believe Yeshua died on a cross, was buried, was rose again, and is sitting at the right hand of the Father now, and I believe he is coming again to rule and reign. Yeshua, I'm asking for forgiveness of my sin. I want to be a child of God. I don't want to be left behind. I want to be a member of the family of God. I am asking you also to be my Lord and Savior. I'm asking you to rule and reign in my heart. And please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me, direct me, teach me your ways that I may live a better life. I believe you are the Messiah. I believe you are the Savior, the one and only Messiah who will be coming again. I believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I thank you for everything, Yeshua. And I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved, healed, born again, set free and delivered from sin and their consequences. And I am now healthy of mind, body, and soul in Yeshua. Jesus, precious, mighty, and awesome name. Amen and amen. And if you've said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the word of God, not from doctrines from the world and not bringing in worldly practices from other religions, the multitudes of religions that are out there that have many gods. 
We are not to do that. We are not to commingle and we are not to worship many gods. We have one. And that's our creator, our father in heaven. Amen. So I would encourage you to get a copy of the Bible so you can actually read the Bible and get to know the heart of your father. Get involved in a Bible study. Develop a prayer life. Start praying and start talking to your heaven, heavenly father. Being born into the family of God, God is your heavenly father now. The creator of all things. How wonderful is that? And he wants a relationship with you. So with that, I am going to bring Shabbat to a close. As Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord Adonai is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. The Aaronic blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6. And you can turn there now and follow along as well. It's in chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons, that he wanted to put his name on Benaiah Israel, and he wanted to give them a blessing. Again, this Shabbat was about bless the blessings of, of Adonai. Now, when you are born again into the family of God, God puts his name on you, and he seals you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is for the entire family of God. And in Hebrew, it goes like this, Ivarakata Adonai ve'ishmareka, Ya'ea Adonai panabalaka vikunaka, Isa Adonai panabalaka ve'a semlaka shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shavuot Tov, everyone. Have a good week. Um, again, we have the Bible study, and we, we also meet live in real time on Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see some of you there. Um, we would love to have you. God bless.